Welcome back everybody to Work and Energy, and we are finally talking about work this time. Let's get into this. Uh, this could be a little confusing, but try to do the best we can as we learn. So the work, work is the transfer of mechanical energy. So if you're do, if you, if you're giving an object energy in one way or another, you are doing work. Okay. There, it can be confusing because there's a lot of formulas to know about it. So work is equal to most commonly the amount of force you do to an object times how far that object moves times the, how much of that force is going in the direction of that distance it travels. On the other hand, work is also how much energy you're giving into it. So how much the object changes its energy, whether it's getting higher, whether it's moving faster, whatever that might be. The total work is equal to change in kinetic energy. The reason why it's not just change in energy is because uh, gravity does work, which we can calculate, so we don't have to factor that in. So the total work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. All right, let's move on and let's uh, learn more about this. So man exerts a steady force of 210 newtons on a stalled car. So this brown object stalled car, 210 newtons. He pushes a, the car a distance of 18 meters. Okay, 18 meters. How much work does the man do? The man pushes the car at an angle of 30 degrees. Okay, so this is 30 degrees. So what we see here, he's not exactly pushing the same way it's moving. So that being said, he's not being the most efficient uh, in this scenario, and so the work will be a little bit different. So the work is going to be equal to the force, which is times displacement times cosine of theta. So this is going to be equal to the force 210 times the distance 18 times cosine theta. And this is, since it's going directly to the right, it's going to be the angle between the force and the distance here. So this angle is going to be 30 degrees. Now, when we put that into a calculator, let's see what we get. We get 210 times 18 times cosine of 30. And we get uh, 3,273. Okay, so 3,273 joules. That's how much work he does, or that's how much energy he puts into this car. Okay? Uh, if the man pushed another car with a force of 160 newtons in the I direction or X direction, and 40 newtons in the negative y direction or j direction. And the, dip, and the displacement of the car is 14 meters in the x direction and 11 meters in the y direction. How much work does he do with the car? So what's important to know is he's putting in a force of 160 newtons in the x direction and 14 meters in the x direction. So he's going to be doing that much work in the uh, x direction. So I'm just going to do 160 times 14. We don't have to add cosine to this because the force is going in the same direction. Uh, it's going in the same direction. So that means cos the angle is just going to be zero, which means cosine of zero is just one. Okay. So that's how much, uh, new, oh, no, how, that's how many joules are going in the I direction. Oh, what? what? 210, uh, 2200, oh, 2240 joules. So that's how much he's doing. And then over here, he's going to be doing 40 and 11. So he's going negative 40 and 11. So the force is going down, but it's moving upwards. So that's 180 degrees. So it's going to be losing some work. So I'm going to do 40 times 11. And we get negative uh, 440. Okay. So then the total over here is going to be equal to 1800 joules. Okay. What we shouldn't do is we shouldn't be putting X or Y coordinates because when you're doing work on an object, um, you're not, you're not giving it direction, right? It doesn't have a direction. How much energy something has doesn't have direction. So make sure you're not putting it as a direction because work and energy are scalars and they shouldn't have direction. Okay. Moving on. F1 is equal to 20 newtons. Okay, F1 is equal to 20 newtons. F2 is equal to 40 newtons. Uh, F3 is equal to 10 newtons. The mass of the ball is 2 kilograms. And it moves 0.6 meters up the surface. 0.6 meters up the surface. Calculate the amount of work done by F1, F2, and F3. So F1, the work done by this one is going to be the force, 20, times the displacement, 0.6, 
times cosine of theta. Since the force and displacement are in the same direction, uh, this cosine is going to equal to be zero. And let's see what we get for this. 20 times 0.6 times cosine of zero, which is just one, is equal to 12 joules. So F1 does 12 joules of work. F2, now this is coming in at an angle here. So if we do this a little bit better, uh, let me draw this a little better, we can see that the force is going directly horizontally while the displacement is going up the ramp. So this angle here, is going to be the same as this angle here, so it's going to be 30 degrees. So what we have for this is work is going to be F2 is equal to 40 times the displacement, which is 0 0.6, times cosine, and we see that the force is 30 degrees away from the direction that it's moving in, the distance. So that's going to be 30, and let's see what this equals. 40 times 0 0.6 times cosine of 30, this equals to be 20.8 uh, joules. Okay. And now point uh, force 3. So force 3 has a force of 10 newtons. However, what we see with force 3 is it's going directly downwards. Okay. So it's going direct. Oops. Sorry, sorry, guys. It's going directly downwards like this. And this is moving to up the ramp. So what we can see is we have a 90 degree angle right here. Is moving up the ramp. Okay, so we have work is equal to the force 10 times the distance 0 0.6 times cosine, and the angle is going to be 90. The thing is, cosine of 90 is just zero, so this whole thing just becomes zero joules of work. And that should make sense because even though this is going down, this force isn't helping it to move at all. So if it's not helping it to move, it's not giving it any energy. Okay, we can see F1 is the one directly responsible for helping it move, and that's why it's giving it uh, uh, it's giving it a lot of energy, or more efficiently, it's giving the energy. Okay, all right, moving on. Okay, let's look at this example, example nine. A crane lifts a 425 kilogram beam vertically, a distance of 170 meters. How much work does the crane do on the beam if the beam accelerates upwards at 1.8 meters per second squared? Okay, we're gonna say this is the beam. It has a force of gravity of 4,250 newtons. And then it's going to be lifting this up. I'm going to call it the force applied. Um, so we don't know what that is. But we do know that this accelerates upwards 1.8 meters per second squared. Uh, we know also this beam is going to be going up 117 meters. Okay, so first we have to figure out what this force applied is. So I'm going to do sum of all forces in the y is equal to mass times acceleration in the y direction. We have two forces in the y, force applied, which is going up, and force of gravity, which is going down, equal to mass times acceleration y. Force applied, force of gravity is 4,250. The mass is equal to 425. And acceleration in the y direction is 1.8. And now let's figure out what force applied is. So we have 425 times 1.8 plus 4250. And we get 5,015 uh, newtons. And that should make sense. It needs to be more because it's accelerating upwards. So this is going to be 5,015 newtons. All right, next, we found the, the force that the crane does. But what we want to do next is we want to find how much work the crane does now. So let's look at this. Work is going to be equal to the force of the crane, 5,015, times how far it moves, 117, times cosine. And since it's going in the same direction as the force, the angle is just zero, uh, which means it goes to one. So 5,015 times 117 gives us uh, 586,755 joules. Or we have it like that. Okay, let's move on. A tractor drags the sled and pulls it uh, pulls it a distance of 20 meters along level ground. The weight of the sled is 14,700 newtons. The tractor exerts a constant 5,000 newton force at an angle of 36.9 degrees. A 35,000 newton friction force opposes the motion of the sled. sled's motion. Find the work done by each force acting on the sled. Okay, let's kind of draw everything out. So we have... Force of gravity, 
which is equal to 14,700 newtons. Force normal going straight up. Force of friction going to the left. Does it say what the friction is? 3,500. Okay, 3,500 newtons. And then we have a force applied. Uh, well, I guess I'll call that the force applied or force by the tractor. Um, I'm just going to call force applied, which is do, 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 the tractor exerts a 5,000 newton force. Okay, 5,000 newtons. And then we see that uh, we drag this for 20 meters. So, um, this is going to the right, uh, let me draw that again, that, that wasn't the best drawing. So this is going to the right, 20 meters. Okay, uh, let's start with the force applied. I'm going to call it the work applied. So that's going to be equal to the force, 5,000, times the distance it travels, which is 20, times cosine, and the angle between... This is going to be equal to whatever this angle is, 36.9 degrees. Okay, that's the angle between the force and the distance. 36.9. Let's plug that into our calculator. 5,000 times 20 times cosine of 36.9. And we get around 80,000 joules. Okay, so we get around 80,000 joules of work done by the tractor. Next, let's look at the work done by friction. So work done by friction is going to be equal to 3,500. It travels a distance of 20 times cosine. And the angle between this time is going to be 180 degrees. And what we can see is that actually this time this force is not giving it energy, it's making it lose energy, it's slowing it down. So we should have negative work being done. So we have 3,500 times 20 times cosine, oops, sorry, 3,500 times 20 times cosine of 180, which gives us a negative number of negative 70,000 joules. Okay. And now we can look at work of gravity. So work of gravity, force of gravity is equal to 14,700. Distance 20 times cosine. And we can see the angle between from here to here is going to be 90 degrees. And what that gives us is this is going to give us zero joules of work. And that should make sense because force of gravity isn't moving these objects at all. It's not helping it to move. It's not giving it energy any kind of way. So it's zero joules. Same thing with the normal force. The normal force is going to have an angle of 90 degrees. And nine, angle of 90 degrees, again, isn't giving it any, any energy, isn't producing any results. So the work done by the normal force is just zero joules. Okay. Hope that all makes sense. Uh, moving on, I think the last one we're going to... Oh, nope. Okay, let's look at this. A constant force P is equal to 160 newtons. It is applied to a 20 kilogram box, which is on a rough surface. While the force uh, pushes the box a distance of 8 meters, the speed changes from 0.5 meters per second to 2.6 meters per second. The work done by the friction during this process is equal to blank. Okay, a few ways we could do this. Uh, let, I'm going to first draw, draw a free body diagram. Force of gravity. This is going to be the force applied. Uh, that's the same thing as this one, but I just drew it coming from the center. And normal force, we're going to have more normal force because it's getting pushed down. And then the force of friction. Okay, and then we know this is going to be going 8 meters this way. Okay, so a few things we can do here. How do we want to do this one here? So what we should know is the work total is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So we know the work total is equal to change in kinetic energy. So let's find what that total work is. So this is going to be equal to 1 half mass, which is 20, V final squared, which is 2.6. 2.6 squared uh, minus 1 half M uh, V initial squared. So that's 0 0.5. 0 0.5 squared. So let's see how much uh, work total we do on this. 2.6 squared times 20 times 0.5. Minus 0.5 squared times 20 times 0.5. 
and we get mm -hmm. 65.1 joules. So that's the total amount of work done. We know force of gravity is going to be doing zero work. And normal force is going to be doing zero work because it makes a 90 degree angle with the distance it travels. So it's not going to be giving it any energy, meaning it's going to have zero amount of work because cosine of 90 is just zero. However, work applied is going to be doing a certain amount of work. Uh, so work applied is equal to the force applied, uh, which is equal to 160 newtons, times the distance, which is 8, times cosine, and the angle between them is going to be 30 degrees, right? Oh, uh, yeah, 30 degrees. Uh, so 30. And so let's see what this gives us. 160 times 8 times cosine of 30, mm. which is going to give us 1,108.5 joules. So what this can now tell us is, it can tell us now what the work of friction is. Work of friction... If this is a work total, 65.1, 1,108.5 plus work of friction should give us 65.1. So I'm just going to do 1,108.5 minus 65.1. And that gives us uh, to be this being negative uh, 1,043.4 joules. Okay. And again, that should be, make sense. It is negative because it's opposing its motion, making it lose energy as it goes. Friction is uh, converting to heat energy. All right, let's look at this last one for this. A person carries a 7 kilogram box 1.2 meters above the floor at a constant velocity of 75 centimeters across a room. Uh, that is 2.8 uh, meters. How much work does the person do on, on the bag? Okay, so let's see. This person is holding a box. While he is holding this box, he's moving... Uh, we'll say he's moving this way, 75 centimeters per second. So this is a little bit of a trick question. What you should know is this person, this box has a force of gravity of 70 uh, newtons. And he's holding it up uh, with the force applied of 70 newtons. Okay. So, and this is moving to the left right here. So what we can see is this angle here is 90 degrees. And what this means is he's not doing any work. The work by the force applied is just zero joule. He's not doing any work. I know his muscles are sore, but he's not doing any work. His force isn't producing any result. He's not lifting it up, so he's not produ he's not giving it any kind of energy. Okay? So in this case, the work done uh, by him is zero joules because it's not going up. He's not producing any results by the force he does. I know that might have been a little confusing, but think about it a little bit more and think about the angle being used, and I hope it makes sense. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and we're going to do part two of work next time.